Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the very first episode of Danny Reguino Literature Club. That name is not derivative whatsoever. If you don't already know, I made a video not that long ago talking about the books I'm going to be reading this month and for the first episode of Danny Reguino Literature Club. And those books include Bushido, The Soul of Japan, Silence, The Temple of the Golden Pavilion, and No Longer Human. If you have a good memory, you can also tell that I excluded one book from that list, and that book is Spring Snow by Yukio Mishima. I'm going to start off the video by explaining why I didn't read that book, or why it's not included here on this book club. I did purchase Spring Snow by Yukio Mishima, and I did start it, and I did get to, to start reading it, but I stopped reading it, and I did not finish reading it by the time this video was being filmed. Uh, why? I got really bored, not because it's a bad book. When I was reading it, I was thinking, well, this is a pretty good book, but I was doing that thing where I'm looking at words, and I'm reading the words. My brain isn't just, it's just not absorbing the words. That's just what happened. I didn't finish the book, especially coming off another Yukio Mishima book. My brain just kind of zipped out like it just I couldn't do it, I guess. That's why Spring Snow is not on this episode of Danny Reno Literature Club. If I do uh, once again get an, um, re-interested in reading that book, maybe I'll include it in a future episode. But as of right now, it's off the list. But this is not a show for books I didn't read. This is a show for books that I did read this month. And the first one I read is Bushido, The Soul of Japan by Inazo Nitobe. The version I read of this was translated by someone and is preceded by many, many, many chapters of summarizing the actual book. Let me just begin by explaining what Bushido, The Soul of Japan really is. Well, this is a book about uh, just Bushido, the samurai code, the warrior code, what many Japanese men lived by and died by for many, many years before westernization and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's just basically a short book documenting what that entailed, what that life was, and what their principles were. It's not any sort of like warrior fantasy novel or anything. It's literally just it's a nonfiction novel written by Nitobe to try to explain to Westerners what Bushido really was. He's, I th I'm pretty sure he's the one that uh, also gave it the namesake of Bushido, so that's cool. But uh, tip, if you do get the copy that I got, skip the first half. I did read the first few chapters because it gave you background on Nitobe and who he was and why he did what he did and his uh, short biography, but then it starts to go into summarizing the chapters of the novel itself, and it's so poorly done that once you get to the actual book, it's so, I appreciate it so much because it's so well written, but the, the summaries are so poorly written and useless because the book itself is not hard to understand. In summary, I did really like this book and uh, the, my purpose for reading it before reading these other books is because these are all Japanese books by Japanese writers and I wanted to understand uh, at least a layer of their culture or where they're coming from, so that's what I did by reading this book and I wanted to understand where especially Yukio Mishima a big uh, proponent for Bushido lifestyle just I just wanted to understand in some capacity this part of their culture so yeah that is Bushido the soul of Japan what did you think about that book leave it in the comments below did you read the book you probably didn't let's go to book two the second book I read was Silence by Shusaku Endo and this is actually a reread because I read this book before around the time when the movie came out because that movie is good as fuck. Silence follows two Portuguese priests who are going to Japan in a time where Christianity was outlawed. They want to spread the word of God and their missionaries and that kind of stuff. And they also want to find another priest who was sent to Japan and never came back. I'm not gonna lie, I read this book because of the movie, not the other way around. I read this book after watching the movie, so when I re was reading it, I was just imaging the movie the whole time. For the most part, it is a very accurate book, uh, movie. It is written by a Japanese man, but it is the point of view of, I believe, Father Rodriguez, who is the Portu one of the Portuguese missionaries. Uh, you see his struggle and how violent and vicious uh, it was to be in Japan during this time, especially as a Catholic or Christian or anything besides, I believe it was Buddhist. You were executed or you were forced to apostatize. That is Silence by Shusaku Endo. Overall, good book. I have to clap again.
I hope the audio is coming out good in this. From what I can tell, it's uh, pretty quiet. Hopefully, uh, it comes out good. And if it doesn't, I apologize. The next book I read is The Temple of the Golden Pavilion by Yukio Mishima. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this book follows an unnamed Buddhist priest, a young man, who loves this golden temple so much that it is his standard for beauty. And he grew up believing in this golden temple as the be-all, end-all for beauty. And he's very ingrained in his Buddhist ways, while also subtly being a deranged psychopath. If you're not paying attention, you might think that this uh, stuttering young priest is just a normal young man who's just trying to get his way up through the ranks. But in reality, his intentions and uh, the way he goes about life and getting what he wants is very twisted. And it eventually culminates with him at the end uh, exploding and burning down the temple as some sort of symbol that beauty can only be appreciated once it's gone. The book does bring in some very interesting points and is very, very well written. I was, I was enticed by it from the beginning and I finished this book fairly quickly for as long as it is. It's not that long. It's an average sized book, but it's not something that uh, I thought I would be reading as quickly as I did. A lot of characters in this book have a lot of depth. There's twists that happen sometimes that got me like, oh shit. I initially read this as some sort of gateway to get into Yukio Mishima to kind of try and get his writing and experience something that he wrote before I got into his tetralogy. I actually really ended up enjoying this book and it got me really excited to get into his tetralogy, which, um, <laughs> as I said at the beginning of the video, I never got around to reading. I do intend to get back to reading Runaway Horses eventually, though. That book, though, is long as fuck. Overall, Temple of the Golden Pavilion, I really enjoyed it, really well written, the story was interesting enough clearly to keep me enticed, the characters were uh, more than two-dimensional in most cases, and uh, I would recommend this book to you guys. But once again, I know most of you probably didn't read this book, but if you did, I would like to know what you think about it in the comments below. And the final book I read this month is No Longer Human by Osamu decide if i'm not mistaken this is the one of the most highest selling japanese fiction novels let me look that up I'm not necessarily finding anything that gives it a ranking, but I see that there was 7 million copies sold, and that's a lot of copies. No Longer Human follows the notebooks of Oba Yozo, right? Am I remembering his name correctly? Nah, I gotta look that up too. Yep, I actually remembered a Japanese name correctly. And this book follows uh, Oba, who is, I guess, they, didn't, they never explicitly say he has depression, or any sort of dissociation or anything, but it's very clear from reading this book that he suffers from some sort of mental uh, instability, and then he has trouble with revealing his inner self to other people. And I found it uh, genuinely fascinating, and I see stuff like this all the time. I know people who have gone through times where they feel like they can't open up to people, that they feel like they're alone, and they uh, make terrible decisions, much like Oba did in this book, and it's very real and it almost has an autobiographical quality to it because I read up on Osamu Zai and there was many things that happened in this book that also happened to him and I'm pretty sure his suicide followed not too long after. It's just uh, very cold and it's very short and it's kind of hard to read because it just comes off as like you're, you're reading the memoirs of this alcoholic troubled man who had no one really there to help him and uh, you see some habits that he starts to encounter that are again very real and very uh, visceral. It's very well written, 
again is from the point of view of this character so it's like his inner monologues and he talks about his clowning and making jokes to cover up how he feels and how he, he even goes to the lengths of going to in a career in comedy or cartooning just because that's how he is that's how he hides his pain and it's very interesting uh, we never actually see any of his clowning or jokes that he makes or how he, he carries himself in front of other people but we do see how on the inside how he feels about it and how he talks about it and that that's what I find very uh, intriguing and very interesting about this book like especially the ending and certain things that happen in there that are just very strong scene most other books will put a strong emphasis on certain moments in this character's life whereas in this book it's uh, merely glossed over in a sea of of these strong moments I really did enjoy this book even though it took me probably as long to read as no longer human and it has like probably over a hundred less pages wait what the fuck did I say it took me just as long to read as the Temple of the Gold Pavilion. What did I say? Did I say as long to read as No Longer Human? It is No Longer. This was probably my favorite book I read up there with Bushido, The Soul of Japan, this month. And I would love to th hear what you think uh, below. If, if I were to recommend any of the books I read this month, I would recommend this one the most, No Longer Human by Osamu Desai. Very famous uh, Japanese novel. It's well worth giving a read, especially because it's short and stuff like this is real. Like People really do suffer from what this character suffers. And he becomes a terrible addict and everything. It's just a, it's a very good and real and harsh book. So yeah. I'm going to bring this video to an end by telling you that what I'm reading for the second episode of Danny Reguino Literature Club is just one book for now, and that is Thrawn Alliances by Timothy Zahn. I was a big fan of the first book. I already started reading the second book. And I will see you next time.